Hey guys, take a look at this picture. See that building on the gray top on the far left side? When I started in 1997, I was in the first bay, way under that tree. We were in that building for 18 years. 18 years. It was amazing. You see this other building over here? The big, with the tan, with the tan roof with all the GMCs around it? That's where we are now. I had 7,500 square feet when we ended up over here. We moved into 26,000 square feet six years ago. It was unbelievable. Couldn't believe it. Hi, Jim Bounds with Co-op Motor Works still and Motorhome Rehab Ranch. And this is, uh, this is the compound. We started in this building right here and uh, this is where we grew. You know, <clears throat> I, had, um, I had a lot of people ask, well, how did we get to this point? How do we get to the point of having to close Cooperative Motor Works at the end of this year. And we spent, Jason and I spent a lot of time trying to talk to you about what we've been trying to shape over the last couple of years and where we're going. But let me take a minute, like I said, I had some comments about how we got here. Why are we doing this right now, all right? When I started over here, I knew that I was gonna be in GMCs because I was doing it for six years with two other GMC dealers, and uh, it was a romantic idea, underfunded, with no idea what I was doing, but I knew that I wanted to mess with GMCs. So originally, actually, I, I was going to go into business with the original Polster contractor for Clasco. We were going to be doing interiors. Uh, they got a super deal they couldn't refuse. They started getting in the marine uh, reupholstery industry business. And uh, so I said, well, I'm going to do it anyway. So I had my wife answering the phone, my son sweeping the floor, <laughs> me doing all the work. Of course, that grew. I said, 18 years later, I had this entire building. We had a building on the other side. And... Uh, had an opportunity to, to get this building. I lusted after that building for 15 years. I looked at that building and said, wow, wouldn't that be awesome? I had an opportunity to get it. <clears throat> and moving over from this to here, my painter and one of my mechanics, you know, you get a type A's together, they got their own ideas to do things, and they had different ideas to do things, and well, I moved into this building without my painter and without one of my mechanics. And like I said, we started this thing not knowing what we were doing. It was sure that I couldn't run a business like this. So I got a general manager. And uh, he had uh, ability to uh, do more labor. We got more labor done and all this. But the thing is, he didn't drink the punch. Back in 1991, I drank the first punch. And if you're watching this, my guess is you drank the punch too. So, he didn't. Here comes COVID. The day COVID hit, I had 16 type A upholstery, paint, and mechanical mechanics. You get that many people in one room, man, somebody's going to get hurt. It was just crazy. The thing was just overrun. It grew just so fast and so big and... You know, without a general manager, I couldn't do this. And the general manager really didn't want to do it. He wanted to work on something other than GMCs. And that just wouldn't go. You know, it had to be GMCs because that's what this is about. I mean, I, at that point, it was 20 years of doing the same thing. So COVID came. We were a mechanical shop. And mechanics were called um, essential workers. I'll be honest with you, this is a global pandemic. This is a big deal. And I can't see that working on a 45 year old motorhome was an essential job. You know, I had a lot of people fault me for this, <clears throat> and I'll take the responsibility. I shut the business down, could not qualify for a PPP loan. Uh, having a building four miles from downtown Orlando 
Florida, every square inch of Florida is monetized. You can't just come down here and hang out for a couple of days. You better have some reservations. This building was very expensive, okay? And all those people running around were very expensive. And all the work that we were doing, we had, the, the county tagged me, we had 58 motorhomes on the property at one time. You know, 80, oh, I'm sorry, that's right, we had 80 vehicles here, 80! Orange County had got me down to 41, you know, 41. And uh, that was really the writing on the wall. I mean, it had grown from a little tiny shop there to this monster, and it just wasn't right. <clears throat> there was too much going on. There wasn't enough foundation built in the business. I didn't know how to do that. I just want to work on motorhomes. I mean, you know. So when it shut down, Jason and Robert uh, were with me. Uh, they were they drank the punch. They're living on the property in their motorhome, you know. <clears throat> so we sat down and said, "Well, why can't this work? Because there's there's interest where buried with work. We got all these people want this. Why can't this work? Because I had too much waste. Okay, too much waste. wasn't wasn't put together right. Overhead was too high. It's in the wrong place." So many mistakes over the years. <clears throat> so, you know, in doing this, it wasn't a failure. It wasn't we're going to stop the business. Well, what do we call it? We're going to, yeah, we need to right size it to what we're going to do. What are we going to do? Don't want to have anything to do with paint. I'm telling you, man, if you know a painter, painters have sniffed enough benzene over the years. They will find a booger in Mona Lisa's nose if they look deep enough. You know what I mean? I obsessed over paint. The one that, you, that I put on Daily Pose uh, left, that thing was, had five coats of high solids clear rubbed to 3,000. That's just ridiculous. I mean, you'd have to stop. Every time you got gas, you'd have to buff the thing. You know, it's a motor home. In interiors. There's enough interior decorators, designers, for that matter, framers that, that, I mean, that's what they do for a living. They're good. Let them do that stuff. See, all this, it sounds easy, but it took a lot of talking. It took a lot of sitting around and, and digging deep to find that the jewel of GMC is in the mechanical aspects of it. To keep it running. You don't want to get run over on the highway. you got to go over 60 miles an hour. And if it breaks, it's got to get back up where it is because that tow bill to get you out of the intersection 100 yards is going to melt your wallet, brother. So the mechanical aspects of this coach is what Jason and all the, the folks felt was, was the positive part of all of this. And... Over the last year, uh, our early videos were kind of rough. Uh, we got complaints about bad sound, and you're right, because my IT guy just really wasn't, wasn't the best. When Scarlett came on, what do you think? We're doing great, all right? So I saw, after two heart attacks and trying to keep all this stuff going for 25 years, I felt the thing I can do is to get in everybody else's loop and to help you work on the stuff, all right? So we've talked a lot about that, and, and I really, I, we're here for you because these are services that we see in the future is needed. Why are we doing it now? Well, right now's the time. I mean, it's been, it's been over a year that we've been not taking any work in, finishing the projects that we had here as much as we can. And now we, uh, uh, Jason has a, a group of projects that were still here that he's gonna finish up. So as soon as he gets his location, he's up and running. He's gonna be doing the mechanical end of this and I'm gonna help you do the rest of it through, uh, through the internet. So from a single bay, my wife answering the phone. She, she did all my books for 11 years. We didn't have a problem at all. 
It came in when everybody said, boy, you've got a big business here. You need to get some professional help in here. You need to get some CPAs and you need to go at it and all this. And you know what I do? Okay, cool, let's do it. Didn't work, you know? Um, for whatever reason, uh, that did not work. Uh, but this business, I didn't think it would take you guys 30 years. I mean, you know, been waiting. Where have you been? But now uh, the next generation has seen these and said, yeah, I want that. And, uh, and we want to mail that. So that's what our future is going to be about. That's where I came from, you know, uh, and uh, why it got all messed up. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for a global pandemic, right? No, not really. All of that showed me where this needed to go. So I'm stubborn. It took, it took a global pandemic. <laughs> all right, well, look, if there's any other questions, don't, don't go out on Facebook or places and look for answers. Ask me. You got my phone number. If you want to look for it, forget that. Get a pen. It's 321-299-5707. Okay? You got a question about why we're here now, something I didn't answer. Brother, you can't say anything unless you call me and you ask me because I'll tell you. Okay? All right, well, look, I promised you guys to show you what's behind door number one. Remember door number one upstairs in the uh, inner sanctum? Come on, man, let's go upstairs. All right, come on. All right, guys, we're going up the steps now. A little dark, it's uh, cold. You know, fluorescent lights don't like cold. Ugh. Okay, you, there we go, there we go. You remember door number two, remember? Remember all that stuff in there? Oh, the light's off. Here's door number one. The watch is a little short. Come on in. <clears throat> door number one is our upholstery. Take a look over here, though. This is the place that I love. Come up here and check this out. Is this amazing? Look out over all this, the big house. This is called the big house. Yeah, you can hear some noise out there. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I grabbed the microphone. You know, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. Uh, so anyway, yeah, this is cool up here. I like coming here and just checking it out. So the mezzanine, I mean, check out these seats right here. Scarlet, show these. These are reupholstered, original late model GM seats with the funky thing. Never been installed. Two tone tan. In the auction, man. Come on with me. Watch your head now. You got uh, bedroom uh, fold out seats. These are from Royale's Coachman. This is a GM floor plan. There's some more Royale's here. Oh, here's a, here's a pair of original seats that are unupholstered. So if you want to do it purple or pink polka dots, original seats are still in decent shape, good patterns. Other seats, these are not uh, originals. These are, they're not flex steels. I don't know what they are. Got to duck real hard here. Ah, come on in. Buddy seat. 73, passenger side buddy seat. Pads. Here's a bunk. Another bunk. Third bunk. Oh, let's see. Oh man, here's another set. These are original late model seats, totally reupholstered in in cloth tan. Never been installed. In the auction, boys. You want to get original? That's the original. But uh, yeah. You get seats, all kinds of front seats, captain's seats. Here's a, here's a dash. I don't know how that boy got up here. Came off in one piece, too. Well, not one, maybe two or three. You know, got a tire cover. 
Got a little problem with it, but it can be fixed. It's made out of fiberglass. Here's some more seats, GM seats. I don't know, fuchsia color, purple. All kinds of seats, cabinets, cabinet faces. I always thought this was neat. See, you want to... Is the rear panel on your dash in good shape? Here's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20 of them. Bezels. Dash bezels. Hey, instead of uh, the uh, GM original barrel chairs. Everybody said they wanted those. You got one set two sets a couple of sets of those babies yeah i mean you know over the years all this stuff shown up and uh i don't know if we made it clear but what happens to a junkyard when the dirt that the stuff's sitting on is more valuable than the junk what happens you probably had a junkyard in your your area. I had one that I went to every Saturday. I had a toolbox in the truck just to go to the junkyard. If I would have known that they were going to close that junkyard, they would have given me one more shot to walk through that junkyard. Boy, I'd have got all kinds of stuff. Back then I was doing uh, Fat Fender Mopar, you know, Chrysler, Hemis and stuff. There was all kinds of engines in there. I wish I'd have known they were going to close that place. Well, guys, I'm giving you guys a chance to have one more walk through through the junkyard, okay? What I'm going to do on the internet, I don't need all that stuff, okay? You guys need it. <laughs> I don't need it. And what Jason's going to be doing in the future, uh, he doesn't need that stuff either. You know, uh, the mechanical, uh, the black and white coaches that he's going to be building, when I say black and white, in other words, it's got... Uh, the running gear and the empty tube might have a, a floor in it. That's what Jason's going to be focused on. He doesn't need all of these seats. He doesn't need all this stuff. I don't need all this stuff. You need all this stuff. That's what the 20th is all about. And believe me, if you come down and get this stuff, and I say come down, the reason, there's no way to ship it. I turned off UPS, all right? So... If you buy it on the Facebook auction, great, thank you. But now you're going to have to get it quickly, quickly. So you might as well just come on down anyhow. You know what I mean? Just, just do that. And uh, you get to walk through the junkyard one more time. How many times in life do you get to do that? Uh, I, I would really invite you to come. Uh, so what else? What do we need to talk about? Again, if you have a question, why am I doing this? What's going on? What's the future? I hope you know what the future is. I'm going to see you guys every day, every week online. If you need me, just call me. I'm going to still be here. Um, the end of the year, we may also, we're, we're the end suppliers for the rubbers and some other things. We're going to be continuing to supply those things to Jeff Serum and uh, Applied GMC. So we're going to still be involved. Like I said, it's not that we're leaving. We're not shutting down. It's not like, oh, what happened? No, no, no. It's changing. We're going to offer different things than we did before. We're going to be right-sizing. Right-sizing. I like that word, right-sizing. That's about it. All right, well, look, thank you for your time. And remember, click and subscribe and uh, share. Tell other people because we're building this thing. Uh, I appreciate your support. If you uh, want to be a ranch hand and help me by doing all this stuff, give me some comments. I'm telling you, I appreciate it. And this is going to be a good thing coming forward. Next year is going to be fantastic for you guys and for us and for the community. All right? All right, well, look. Thanks a lot. Tell somebody about what I'm talking about here, and I hope to see you on the 20th. Bye-bye.